Hello friends, I'm Akash and this is your News of the Week for the week of January 15th to January 21st, 2023. I'm Akash Vakoti and let's get right into our first story. The United States of America has reached its debt limit, the current maximum amount of money it is allowed to borrow for the first time in 10 years. This has caused fears of a global meltdown if the U.S. Congress does not pass a bill to increase the limit to prevent the government from failing to pay back its debt. Now, although the U.S. has occasionally hit this debt limit before with COVID-19 and Russia-Ukraine war now affecting the economy on a monumental scale, the damage that this could cause to the world economy is far greater than it ever was before. In the past few occasions that this has happened, representatives and senators threatened to block the increase from happening if certain demands were not met. This time, it's no different. The same thing is happening now. While Democratic representatives seem to be all for the debt limit increase, some Republicans remain steadfast on changing economic policies to meet their goals before the limit can be increased. This is actually where we are now. And as of now, there's negotiations of Midway in order to satisfy both sides in this issue. I truly believe that Congress and the White House can get this issue sorted soon to avoid any future repercussions regarding this debt limit. Let's take a look at our next story of the week. Ukraine's allies in the war against Russia met at Rammstein Air Base in Germany on January 20th, 2023 to discuss Ukraine's defense and to establish a plan for aid supplies to Ukraine. This meeting was mostly successful in its work, but there was one issue that was left unfinished at the end of the convention, and that was regarding tanks. Germany had plans to send some of its widely used Leopard 2 tanks to Ukraine but only if the USA would cooperate and send some of its own top-level Abrams tanks. When President Biden was asked about it, he said that Ukraine will get all the help it needs, but didn't actually specify a plan to send tanks to Ukraine, implying that his administration is uncertain about whether to go through with it. Top defense leaders in America, including Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, have said that the Abrams tanks are not the right fit for Ukraine and that it will be a hassle for Ukrainian soldiers to learn and use it in the war at a relatively short notice and a pretty quick pace. But with Ukraine, Germany, and other allies putting pressure on the U.S. to deliver its tanks, it seems like this is a decision that could change at any time. And that can also explain why the current reaction from the Biden administration is to just deflect the question or keep quiet on it. Hopefully we're going to be seeing the results of whatever goes on with these tanks very soon. And in the meanwhile, we'll take a look at our final news of the week. A Nepalese airplane crashed while trying to land at Pokhara International Airport on January 15, 2023, killing all 72 people on board. Yeti Airlines Flight 691 took off from Kathmandu's Trebuvan International Airport and crashed in the Seti Gandaki River, not far from Pokhara Airport. A video of the plane was taken from the ground showing that the plane had tilted heavily to the left in its final moments, and the live stream inside the plane was taken by a passenger on board and lasted just until the crash occurred. As it turned out, the passengers inside were unaware that anything was wrong until it was too late. Now, a five-member investigatory committee has been formed to figure out what exactly led to this crash. And as of now, they speculate that the recent opening of the new Pokhara airport, where the plane was trying to land, had something to do with it. As it was relatively unfamiliar to the pilots, it had just opened two weeks before this crash, and it didn't have an ILS. This is an instrument landing system, and it allows planes to land in conditions when they can't see the runway. So let's say if it's night or if it's really foggy or hazy, then the ILS would come into play. However, this situation is different because the weather was quite clear, and that's why some are saying that it may have been a technical issue with the plane itself. My condolences to the families of the victims of this plane crash, and I hope that this investigation will lead to the prevention of crashes like this again. 
That is all of your news of the week for the week of January 15th to January 21st, 2022. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you soon in another news of the week. Goodbye.